Good morning. This is Monday, December 13th, and today's devotion is on intercessory prayer. This is Luke 18. Men always ought to pray and not lose heart. You cannot truly intercede through prayer if you do not believe in the reality of redemption. In other words, if you don't believe that people can be saved, intercessory prayer won't be a part of your life. Instead, you'll be simply turning intercession into useless sympathy for others, which will serve only to increase the contentment they have for remaining out of touch with God. In other words, if you can't honestly pray for them to be convicted of their sins, this is what I hear all the time, God is love, God is love, and He is. But if we're going to honestly intercede, we have to intercede with His heart and His mind. They'll stay in their sin. They won't come out of their sin. They'll just feel sympathy from us. True intercession involves bringing the person or the circumstances that seem to be crashing in on you before God until you are changed by his attitude toward that person or the circumstances they may be living in. Intercession means to fill up with what is lacking in the afflictions of Jesus. In other words, we take on the heart and mind of Jesus. That's Colossians 1, 24. And this is precisely why there are so few intercessors. People describe intercession by saying, is putting yourself in someone else's place. That's not true. That's already been done. Intercession is putting yourself in God's place. It's having his mind and his perspective about that issue that you're praying for in that person's life. As an intercessor, be careful not to seek too much information from God regarding the situation you're praying about because you may be overwhelmed, and that's a true statement. If you know too much, more than God has ordained you to know, you can't pray. The circumstances of the people become so overpowering that you're no longer able to get in there to the underlying truth. That's a great rule of thumb. When you're praying for somebody, don't be overloaded with information about the situation. You'll, you'll be off track in your intercession. Our work is to be in such close contact with God, not the information, but with God, that we may have his mind about everything. Intercession is the only thing that has no drawbacks because it keeps our relationship completely open with God. What we must avoid in intercession is praying for someone to be simply patched up. We must pray that person completely through until they get into contact with the very life of God. We used to call that tarrying at the altar when I was a boy. I remember altar calls that lasted for hours. We tarried. We stayed there until that person broke through with God. Or it was us. We broke through with God. Think of the number of people God has brought across our paths, only to see us drop them. When we pray on the basis of redemption, God creates something different within us that he can create no other way than through intercessory prayer. The challenge I have for us today is, what do our prayers for the lost look like? When we pray for the lost person to find Jesus Christ, what do they look like? It may be somebody very close to us, a son or a daughter or a spouse, a parent. How do we intercede for them? As we pray for them to find Jesus, do we honestly pray with God's mind and God's heart so that he will do what he has to do to bring them to that moment of reconciliation with him? Let's pray. Father, I thank you that you call us to be intercessors. And today, Father, I pray that we would honestly look and evaluate how we pray for the lost. It might be somebody really close to us, and they're into some things they should not be into. So, Lord, do we really pray this, these little tiny baby prayers, or do we honestly pray the Spirit of God down upon them to convict them of those things? So, Father, teach us how to pray. Let us learn to become honest and have your heart and your mind. We love you, Father, and we, we're so blessed that you trust us with this. And we pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. God bless, and I'll see you tomorrow.